Okay, we're up to Mr. Prosser and his financial plan, his long-term financial plan or whatever the hell they gave it. Now, you've got to understand above everything else that the long-term financial plan or whatever, you know, whatever, I think I got the wrong words, is nothing but a ruse. It's a ruse. It's a shield. It's another, it's one of the many, many smoke screens that TriMet will throw at the public. And the, and the unwar unwaring public doesn't follow it like I do, so they don't know what's happening to them. Now, a long-term financial plan is basically how do we screw the union employees? That's that's the whole point of this, okay? There's nowhere they're going to get any money, okay? They've, they've expanded their program beyond their ability to support it. Their, their, pro, their, their TriMet uh, facilities are falling apart as evidenced in the max derailment recently where the truck fell apart. And so they, they are struggling to find resources for money. Now, when it comes to their union employees, there are no contracts. They, you know, whatever they said to us is down the tubes, apparently. You know, when it comes to Clackamas County, oh, yeah, you got to pay your commitment to put in this line. But when it comes to your union employees, now we can break your, you. You know, let's give them some credit. It's not just them, okay? It's a worldwide movement against union, unions and union employees. So what we have is Greg Prosser and Mr. Stovall, the great pontificator, talking about this financial plan when it's really a ruse for destroying the union benefits. Now, they make this whole big deal about, oh, we want our stakeholders, we want input, we want this, we want that. And uh, what, do you, what do they really get? Okay, what do they, they say and what they do? I'm going to illustrate it for you right here. Okay, they want input, but guess what? Got too many pieces of paper around here. Just a minute here. Um, the strategic uh, finance plan subcommittee met a couple weeks ago um, and um, talked about where we need to go. Um, we did um, receive a. a a letter from ATU uh, with input, which I uh, really do appreciate. Um, and I believe, uh, for President Warner, you have responded to that letter. Um, what we now, you heard what he just said. Right now, watch this, and then I'm going to comment and I'm going to prove to you that they have it in for the union employees, and you won't be able to argue with me. We would have raised that issue years ago. Today, I'm telling you that we have had financial experts look at the OPEB numbers, and we believe those numbers are overstating the problem. Now, that was the president of our union, ATU 757, Bruce Hansen, making a comment about their financial plan. <laughs> He's limited to three minutes. I mean, they gave him three minutes to talk. They accept his letter and they say, we will evaluate your letter. What other evidence do you have to see that they have effectively frozen the union completely out of all of this? Okay, this is the evidence that I'm trying to bring forward here. They are completely intent on destroying the union. And you know that because they have left the union out completely in all of their planning. So in other words, they've decided that the 1,700, 1,800 union employees get zero voice in everything that's coming up with the financial plan. This is the point. The point is, is that they are gunning for the union employees. They take a letter from Bruce, they'll allow him three minutes, but they even allow me three minutes. There you go, folks. This company is destroying you.